Thanks. But I have President Mahan. I'd like to call to order the September 22nd, 2011 meeting of the Johnson County Community College Board of Trustees, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Terry Schlecht, our uh, roll call and recognition of visitors, please. <coughs> this evening's visitors include Roosevelt Neal, Adam Gessinger, Karen Hakey, and Ann Arnott. Thank you. This next section on our agenda is the petitions and communications section of the board agenda. It's a time for members of the community to provide comments to the board. Comments are limited to five minutes unless a significant number of people plan on speaking. In that instance, the chair may limit a person's com comments to less than five minutes. Presenters may choose to speak either at the first or second petitions and communications section, but not both. And prior to beginning the comments, we'll ask for you to state your name, your address, city, and state. And with that, is there anyone who would like to address the board at this time? All right, if you could move to the podium, please. My name's John Winter. I live at 209 North Frank in Spring Hill, Kansas. We've all experienced changing to, to, changing to a cheaper brand and found our disappointment filled with disgust. Maybe it's coffee or soda. Tell a Starbucks or a Pepsi devotee that the yellow always save label is just as good and cheaper and they'll laugh you, they'll laugh you to scorn. Tell one who for three generations has driven a GM vehicle that IKEA will get you there just as well or ask a Harley Davidson rider if they've ever considered a Suzuki. When you find a personal care product that works for you, would you hazard a change? Snap-on tools deliver a reliability that the Walmart motto of satisfaction guarantee can never match with their cheaper products. If so, once again, we find ourselves desiring the quality that we traded and abandoned for less. JCCC has striven for excellence. It's one of our values and the community has come to expect this from the college. For decades, the JCC brand has been top tier, and we've taken delight. We have all taken delight in being employed within the JCCC family. You who have been employed here for 10, 20, or 30 years are very familiar with the phrase, the JCC family. It was the purposeful habit to use this phrase. The experience of the JCCC family followed in the wake of how we defined ourselves as a family. It's been years since this phrase has been used. The JCC brand has slipped and we're not the better for it. We have a great vision here and we've stated our mission with clarity and with confidence and our values, they're high and we bring a commitment to these values and we aspire to a high standard. This has been the JCC brand and it still is. Our values tell us which road we will choose to accomplish our mission. The value of excellence stands tall and preeminent among us. This value has been lacking while pursuing an RFP to outsource the custodial department. Budget short for, the budget shortfall for the college should not be carried or sought to be redeemed primarily from one department. This burden needs to be carried campus-wide with its shared impact. The average custodial staff member is among the lowest paid of all the college employees, and we're preparing to ask them to contribute one-third of their salary and half of their benefits so that the college's budget can come more into balance. This is the net result if any of our current custodial employees are willing to accept a job offer from a contract cleaner. The college has put into writing a request that the cost of the contract for cleaning not increase for five years. Thus, a current housekeeping employee will be expected to do the same job if it is offered to them and do it with the same quality and expertise for two-thirds of the salary and then accept no cost of living increase for half a decade. Would we approach the faculty with such a proposition? I'd ask, is this the excellence that we strive for? We can do better, especially when consider considering the human factor. It's been months that this specter has stalked and ravaged the housekeeping department. The mental, emotional, relational components of this department have been largely neglected while scrutinizing budget numbers. All of our staff members who have had the numbers to retire have retired in mass this past July except one. 
Our staff's relationships both at the college and off campus have been stressed and eroded with the insecurity and uncertainty of their value to this institution and the question of whether they will be employed in 30 days or able to continue to provide for the people that are most dear to them and the things that they treasure. The emotional and mental strain is great and it increases weekly. I myself am accessing professional counseling in an attempt to retain an internal equilibrium that doesn't damage and hopefully does no harm to the people and things in which I've invested my life these last decades. Many of us in this department are at risk because of the lack of excellence in how the outsourcing has been pursued and communicated. The JCC brand has slipped. Our, vi our vision, mission, and values are high. They are intact. Yet it seems clear that some of our values have not been our central guides while endeavoring to conclude this issue. For more than 40 years, the services provided to this campus through the housekeeping department have been top rated by every internal survey. Recently, I was approached by management from one of the companies that had bid to replace the custodial department. Among themselves, they agreed that this facility was the best kept and cleanest campus that they've toured. The college has a sizable investment in the training of our staff and it shows in the appearance of our buildings. As in other areas of our lives, whether it's our food, our cars, or how we take care of ourselves, we get what we pay for. This custodial department puts high importance on the JCC values and it shows in the product delivered. This board will hazard predictable dilemmas and known problems when expecting consistent quality while purchasing a cheaper product. The truth you get what you pay for will not be mocked. The JCC brand has been and is top tier. I ask you not to seek temporary budget relief through compromising the long-term upkeep of this campus. This custodial department has demonstrated an excellent track record, and I'd ask the board to, re to reaffirm the college's greatest assets, its people. Our people make the difference. That's what we say, and it's always, may it always be true. For months, the custodial department employees' sense of personal significance to the campus and the college's vision has plummeted, and it continues to slide today. The hourly employees of other departments on campus are observing this outsourcing process and how the invisible lowest paid among us are treated. And many of them are concluding, will I also be traded and sold for 30 pieces of silver? I thank you for the opportunity to approach you. Thank you, John. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, speak to the board at this time? Seeing none, we will close the petitions and communication section of, of this part of the agenda, and there will be another one later uh, this evening. With that, we'll move to uh, awards and recognitions. And uh, uh, Dr. Grove, do you have some good news for us today? Yeah, uh, Chair Weiss, we have four awards and recognitions tonight. I'd like to invite Christina Wright to the podium, first of all. She is our event manager and Gold Star supervisor, and she's going to be recognizing uh, the first two award winners. Good evening. As he said, my name is Christina Wright. I am the events manager with the Performing Arts Series in the Carlson Center. I've been here since February of this year. Um, for those of you that haven't attended a program in our facility before, um, not only are you missing out on excellent programming, um, but you're missing out on an engaging with our small <laughs> stars, our volunteers that work. Um, they're not just ushers, they're not just coat room attendants or greeters, they're really ambassadors for the college. Um, this past year and this past fiscal year, they served at over 177 events in the Carlson Center, from a, for, a performing arts series event to an academic theater performance um, to an outside meeting in Polsky Theater. They served 10,873 volunteer hours with us. They served over 79,000 patrons in our facility. <coughs> we have around 200 active volunteers, and this program has been in place for the past 20 years, or pretty much since the building opened. According to the Independent Sector Report and Corporation for National Community Service, the value of a volunteer per hour is $21.36. You have to remember that these people, um, especially our Vol Stars, these, um, well, while many of them work, many of them are retired professionals as well. But whether they're retired or they work, they're educated ambassadors for the college. Um, these people set up military bases in Antarctica, the first military base we ever had there. They are retired federal agents, retired architects. One of the first architects in the country is a Vol Star with us. Um, they're current accountants and school teachers. They serve on boards around the community, other volunteer boards. Um, and they also take care of parents, siblings, and children. 
They're active and engaged in our community, and they do an excellent job of recruiting current students for us and then also promoting the college. If you take the number of hours they volunteered with us this past year and then the $21.36 per hour rate, the total value of the Volstar program to Johnson County Community College this past year was a little over $232,000. That's money saved that um, we're not paying people to be here to work in our facility, but people are volunteering their time to come and promote um, the college for us. I have two volunteers here tonight. Karen Hake and Madeline Getzinger, could you please stand? Both of these ladies have been with the Volstar program for the past uh, 20 years, or as they'll say, they were here when the building, they're as, they're as old as the building, as they'll tell people, and with, with pride. They were here, here when the Carlson Center was built. Um, Karen and Madeline were both recognized at our Volstar Appreciation Banquet last month um, because they reached their 2,000 hour mark of volunteers. Um, our volunteers average 50.36 hours per year serving our program. Obviously, these ladies go above and beyond that, and they reach the 2,000 hours of service mark to our organization. That's not just to our organization. That's over 2,000 hours of service to Johnson County Community College. So it's, you're not recognizing me or really the Performing Arts Series. We're recognizing the, the volunteers, the Vol Stars. And um, next time you're in our facility and you see them with their red scarf around their neck, please be sure and give them an extra handshake because they do a really good job representing us. If you could give them a round of applause, please. Next, I'd like to ask Professor Anita Tebby to come to the uh, podium. Um, uh, Professor Tebby is chair of the Legal Studies Department and she will do the next presentation. Thank you, Dana. It is uh, my pleasure to uh, uh, introduce a person that is well very well deserving an award, and that is the Exemplary Service Award. And um, the name of the person is Paula Car Corte, and I want to tell you just briefly why she is entitled to this uh, award. Uh, we in the paralegal program, we teach courses on campus and we teach them online and we also uh, teach them by television. And it's through the television that uh, we have uh, worked very closely with Paula. And um, in 2004, I was teaching an intro to law class and we were teaching it on television. And so I was working very closely with Paula and oftentimes I would bring in guest speakers uh, such as P uh, practicing attorneys to talk to us about real estate law, uh, practicing attorneys to talk to us about family law. And this particular <coughs> semester I invited Melody Cockrell to come in who happened to be a assistant adjunct professor for us at the time. And she has a criminal law background. She was assistant prosecutor <coughs> at uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And she gave, and, and I'm not underrating it, a brilliant two-hour presentation on criminal law to our students that was televised. Well, unfortunately, Melody had a massive stroke in 2008 and had to retire. And uh, she recovered, but not uh, completely. And in two, and this past August, 2011, she had another massive stroke, but this one was fatal. Her family contacted me because they knew that she had given this presentation uh, a number of years ago and that we had taped it and asked if there was any way that we would have a copy of it. This would mean a great deal to her family. Mm -hmm. So I immediately contacted Paula and said, I know this is a needle in the haystack you know, to try to find this way back in 2004 and that you clean your materials out like all of us do but if you could just take 10 minutes to try to find this, this would make a great deal, mean a great deal to the family. Uh, this was on a Wednesday afternoon about uh, four o'clock. Uh, when I came to work the next day, Paula had a message for me saying, we found the tape. And uh, she said, we will have a copy for you uh, tomorrow morning, Friday. I contacted the family that Friday morning and uh, by noon that day, they had picked up the tape. Uh, needless to say, Paula went way beyond the call of duty. I was just visiting with her now, and she said, it was just amazing that we had that. We had destroyed every other 
uh, tape that was, um, every show that was taped that season except for yours. And uh, the only reason we saved yours is we thought that maybe you were going to come back and do it again sometime. So I uh, believe, and I'm sure all of you in this room believe, that uh, Paula went beyond the, uh, the, uh, her duty, beyond the uh, call of duty, and the family will be forever grateful to you, Paula, and we thank you very much. Finally, I'd uh, like to ask Miyoshi Neal to the podium to receive her award. She received the Career Zoom Kansas Success Award recently from the Kansas Post Secondary Technical Education Authority. Um, and this is an award that's given to graduates who are enjoying career success in their chosen field. Uh, in the nomination letter written by Professor Richard Rowe, who is our Metal Fabrication Department Chair, he says that, uh, hands down, Miyoshi is the best welder he's ever tested. Her welds are always perfect, and they look as if they were done by a machine, as a matter of fact. She came to our program as a young, unwed mother, and she was determined to uh, carve out a better life for herself and for her child. She worked full time while she was going through the program, received her associate's degree, went on to get her bachelor's degree as well, came back and, and uh, has, is teaching in our Johnson County Community College BNSF welding program. Um, concluding his letter of nomination, Professor Rowe says that students consider her to be one of the best instructors they've ever had. She's amazing and inspirational and an incredible woman in a very non-traditional job. Congratulations. Thank Yoshi. you. And that concludes awards and recognitions. Right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. If I might. Um, on behalf of the college and um, everyone here at the college, I'd like to thank Karen and Madeline for their great volunteer efforts to Paula for her really outstanding beyond the call of duty efforts. Congratulations to all three of you. Our college is a special place because of individuals like you and we really appreciate all that you do. Uh, to Miyoshi, I'd just like to say congratulations as well and to let you know that um, you were also recognized today at the Board of Regents meeting um, and congratulated and recognized um, not only as being a Johnson County Community College graduate but then um, all of the accolades that were um, mentioned by Dr. Grove as well, so we congratulate you as well, and thank you. You four truly do exemplify why this college is a special place. So we do appreciate it. Thank you. And I know that our uh, esteemed board member, uh, John Stewart, has uh, taken some welding classes, and I don't know whether you've had the, uh, the benefit of, of Miss Neal's instruction or not, but if you have not, it, it sounds like that's uh, too bad. I wish I would have, because my welds were never described as machine. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, right, thank you. Congratulations to everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Carter, are you ready with your uh, lobbyist report? I am. Well, good evening. You'll recall that uh, last month when I was before you, a good portion of my uh, report addressed the, uh, the anticipated tax policy discussion that, uh, that we know will be occurring over the course of uh, the next months and, and the ensuing legislative session. Uh, this month's report also contains significant information that is beginning to uh, be unveiled about the uh, tax policy debate that, uh, that we'll be undertaking. Uh, and I would anticipate that um, each month uh, I'll be devoting a significant portion of time um, to this very issue. Uh, it's, it's not one that's uh, easily understood given all of the complexities and, and all of the uh, pieces that are going together to make it work. And we still don't know what all of those pieces are. Uh, however, um, some of the rhetoric and rumors are now beginning to tape, take shape, uh, and at a recent event uh, in Wichita, the governor uh, gave a glimpse as to what he believes um, his proposals will be looking like. He didn't release specific metrics uh, or components that, that make up his tax policy plan, but, but he did indicate that the key to the proposal is reducing and eliminating the personal uh, income tax at the Kansas level. That, uh, that will certainly have a number of implications. It's yet to be uh, determined whether or not that will be a phased out um, system of, of the personal income tax in Kansas or whether it will be an all out 
um, repeal or, or uh, elimination. Uh, I would hazard a guess that uh, they cannot do it uh, as a as a full-on elimination in, in one year, and so we'll probably see a multi-year plan uh, proposed and debated where uh, we're talking about what happens over, over the course of three to five years uh, of eliminating the, the personal income tax. The, uh, the governor and, and uh, the people that are, that are trying to get their arms around it to propose these uh, tax, uh, tax policies are relying heavily on Arthur Laffer, who was a Reagan-era economist, and uh, you may be familiar with the Laffer curve that, uh, that made him famous back then. And uh, the, uh, the theory behind his plan is that tax cuts lead to growth that ultimately creates more income for government than it had when it was at a higher rate. Um, the, uh, the policy group that's, that's reviewing the tax proposals is also relying pretty heavily on, on a KU economist uh, and, and uh, researcher, Art Hall. That is someone uh, who you've probably heard me talk about before when, when talking about uh, studies and or um, uh, proposals that relate to a conservative uh, economist point of view. Uh, not everyone's on board, um, and that's, that's probably no secret. It's a little bit difficult to be on board when you don't know what all the details are, but when the governor held uh, one of his economic summits uh, in Overland Park <coughs> recently, um, he was um, questioned, or, or there were a number of, of local uh, business people who were apprehensive um, about what diminished uh, personal income tax returns uh, at the state level would do to, to the overall budget um, at, at the state. Um, that's a great question and one that we'll be talking about um, throughout the course of, of the next legislative session. The concern is that when you reduce taxes in one area, um, they are frequently pushed to another local unit or uh, another body of government uh, and are increased in other areas. Specifically, the, uh, the ag sector is very concerned as uh, they rely heavily on, on land to produce their income. Uh, and that is one area that uh, in states that have a low personal income tax, um, they have higher, much higher property taxes. So that is certainly one area um, that we could see uh, increase. I think we'll also be talking about the, um, the uh, sales tax exemptions on services. I don't see that argument really going anywhere. Uh, I've talked to the, tax chair, the House tax chairman about that issue specifically, um, but it is, it is one issue that, that will come up and it will uh, draw a number of people to the Capitol on the day that they, that they debate that particular um, component of the, of the proposal. The uh, same group that the governor addressed and, and began to sort of unveil some of, some of the, uh, the, the tidbits of, of his tax policy proposal is uh, undergoing a fundraising effort of around $500,000 to uh, wage a full-on campaign. It'll be on TV, it'll be on radio. Um, the ads will be um, targeted towards business people, um, Tea Party groups and, and affiliates, uh, and, and it will begin to uh, convince people that, that this is the way to go uh, as far as tax policy is concerned in Kansas. The, um, so there, there is a lot yet to, uh, to occur. I think that we'll begin seeing Secretary of Revenue um, Nick Jordan uh, traveling the state and, and unveiling um, more of the details than, than what were released uh, at the Kansas Policy Institute's uh, annual meeting last week. The uh, turning to revenues, and, and again, um, this is a bit of good news, the, uh, the revenues trended up uh, two months into the state's fiscal year. Uh, revenue predictions at the end of August were $16 million ahead of uh, projections. That again puts us on schedule to end the fiscal year uh, 2012 um, in, in the next season at around $200 million in the bank uh, if things continue to go uh, according to, to plan. The, um, the Board of Regents at their meetings uh, this week discussed the, their funding request or their proposal and uh, the initial proposal was set out to, uh, to be about a $60 million request to, to the legislature this year. The, uh, the, the proposal was winnowed down uh, in the final uh, discussions, and so it's going to be closer to $48 million. And you can see in your notes that I prepared that $40 million of that would go to state universities. The $20 million requested for community colleges and technical colleges uh, was scaled down to, to $8 million. Uh, and it was not requested in, in the form of a multiple-year commitment. It would be just a one-year uh, one request. 
Um, so we will be um, seeing what happens. That will be the, the uh, budget proposals that are submitted to uh, the governor's budget office as well as the official position of the, of the Board of Regents. With regard to, to redistricting, again, I won't go into a lot of details there, um, but I would like to report that there were about 80 people that attended the, um, the Congressional Redistricting Town Hall that was held on campus here. Uh, the meeting was uh, September 2nd in the uh, Polsky Theater. Uh, not a lot of controversy at that particular meeting, um, but hold on to your seat because come September 30th, next Friday, uh, I believe that the meeting in Kansas City, Kansas and, and Leavenworth will produce some fireworks. Um, it, you'll recall that uh, I reported early on that um, there is a, a discussion of a, a congressional district that would uh, capture all of western Kansas, run along the north border of the state, and run down and capture Wyandotte County. You can be certain that folks uh, in Wyandotte County <coughs> will be lined up to uh, testify on, on the 30th of, Oct of October. Uh, similarly, the, uh, the remaining uh, town hall meetings will be out in western Kansas, and I would imagine that, that those folks would have something to say about uh, what, what the uh, makeup of their district looks like, so, looks like as well. The, um, this all um, sort of comes to a head then when you start talking about the 2012 elections. We've already got, we already have uh, several folks who have indicated their intent to run or have filed to run. Specifically, there are a number of um, sitting um, senators at the state level um, that are targeted. Um, several here in, in the Johnson County area. To, uh, to name a few uh, of, of those that have already indicated uh, their intent or, or who have received a challenger, rather, I'll just name the incumbents. Um, Senators Vicki Schmidt in Topeka, Tim Owens in Overland Park, John Vrattle, Lee Wood, and Steve Morris all have um, challengers that have either filed or uh, in, uh, indicated their intent to file. Uh, we know of at least four others where the discussion uh, at least has been tossed about, but no one has, has formally declared or, or indicated their, uh, their formal intent to run. Um, there, there will be an effort to unseat a number of, of uh, senators, and, and the Senate body, as you are aware, is considered more moderate when you compare the two, two bodies, uh, the House and the Senate at the state level. Uh, and there will still be districts that are changing. So some people have filed. Um, that could be interesting to see what occurs if, if their Senate district in which they filed uh, has boundaries that move. Um, there will be a number of folks, and, and there are a number of folks who have already filed for uh, election in the House uh, that could face the same and, and likely would have more of a, an issue uh, with regard to uh, state boundary redistricting. Uh, an event came to, together very quickly uh, here on campus, and uh, just after the uh, Labor Day recess, uh, Senator Moran's office contacted us and, and uh, asked if they could uh, use our facility to host a business roundtable. And approximately 21 people um, came to campus uh, on Monday morning, the uh, 12th of September, to uh, sort of just chew the fat with, with the senator. Uh, it was a very interesting meeting. Um, the, uh, I would say that there was a lot of uh, good sharing and transparency in the room, and, and that was exactly what the, uh, the senator had asked for. The, uh, the, the great news for us is that, uh, that the offices like that are, are turning to us to, to look to host those types of events, and um, the senator uh, uh, indicated his appreciation for the use of the event and that he would like to host additional round, business roundtables um, like that on campus, so we're looking forward to that. The final thing that I would uh, indicate that is not in your printed version of the report would be that we have finalized the dates for the legislative uh, breakfast and uh, lunch series that we've done. I, I add the word lunch because uh, we react to the feedback that we receive from, from the legislators <clears> that attend. And so we'll be scheduling a couple of lunches as well as a couple of breakfasts to accommodate the schedule requests that have been made to us. Um, Terry Schlish will be contacting you or, uh, by email to let you know what those dates are uh, so that you can confirm your, your interest to, to participate based on your schedules. Uh, but just very quickly, November 15th uh, will be a lunch. Uh, December 6th is a lunch. December 7th and 8th are, will be breakfasts. I'm, I'm uh, sorry, can you run through those again? Please? I'd sure. Uh, November 15th will be a lunch. December 6th will be a lunch. And then December 7th and 8th will be breakfast events uh, here on campus. And we typically hold those uh, in the Bodker Conference Room over, uh, over across campus. So I think I would, I would stop there and see if there are any questions. Really? 
Trustee you, Musil. Did, could you get to us information about the percentage of the Kansas general fund budget that is made up by personal income tax revenues and then corporate income tax revenues? I, and you may have those off the top of your head, but it would be interesting to know those numbers because there's been a – the initial plan, as I thought, was to take corporate income tax down to zero. And now it seems like there's more emphasis on personal income tax. <laughs> And those are two pretty large numbers in the budget. Um, and so I think it'd be helpful to me if I knew what those, how those corresponded to the rest of the state budget, because if you don't have the money, you don't have it to spend on prisons, roads, or education, or whatever. That is correct. <coughs> I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. Um, I do know that the corporate number is um, considerably smaller than, than the personal uh, number. Uh, I will get those for you based on the most recent uh, data that we have. Um, for, for both this fiscal year and, and what they look like for, for last fiscal year. Uh, but you're correct, uh, that is the concern, is when you remove those dollars, whether it's by a phase, phase out um, plan uh, or all at once, what do you do to replace those dollars? Um, interestingly, that was one of the questions that was asked at the, at the Economic Summit in Overland Park, and, and um, it was also a question that was asked by one of the, uh, the people sitting around the table at the uh, Governor's Council of, on Economic Advisors, uh, this, this sort of hand-picked group that replaces uh, Kansas Inc. Um, that, that used to be run by Stan Ulrich. Uh, he still will run this, this particular group under the uh, umbrella of the Department of Commerce. And uh, one, of the, one of the participants in, in that group asked the same question um, of, of the budget director. How do you plan to replace the revenue when you... When you cut the revenue, and I don't think that was a question that they, they probably were, were hoping would be asked or would have to address, and um, their dance card was full by the end, end of the answering period, but I would be happy to get those numbers. Thanks, Mr. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Carter, with regard to the, the state Senate races, would you characterize the uh, opponents that you mentioned as members of the opposing party or uh, different elements within their own parties? No, I would say that the ones that we know to date are um, uh, conservative Republicans challenging those that are termed moderate Republicans. Right, thank you. Right. See no other questions? Uh, I might just yes. comment. Uh, you talk in here about the state revenues being up after the first two months of the fiscal year. Uh, I guess I don't find a lot of comfort in that, that that's going to be a trend. And I don't know what you're hearing, but with the agriculture, the drought that's in the state, uh, that hadn't shown up yet, and, and energy prices are dropping. So I, I have a feeling that by the end of the year we'll be fighting that again, and there won't be a surplus. There'll actually be a deficit where they're going to require some more adjustments in budgets. I would not argue with you uh, one bit. And while I'm not an economist, um, those particular numbers that have shown the uptick are directly related to sales tax. Uh, and specifically in the month of August, you see a lot of shopping uh, as it relates back to, to back to school. So um, I think that's a fair analysis. Yes. I, have, I have a quick question, Mr. Chairman. I keep hearing conflicting reports about this uh, state income tax issue, and maybe I'm hoping that you know the answer, which is why I'm asking you the question. These nine states, is it nine states that have no state income tax? Um, I have heard that those states never had it that there has been no state that had the income tax and then phased it out. Is that, is that true? Is that I half can't, true? I can't speak specifically to the number of states and or um, how their um, status <coughs> arrived at not having a personal income tax. Um, I can say, though, however, that in those states, um, they do have, in some cases, either a higher property tax or a uh, greater significance in the um, amount of natural resources that that state produces, which then provides a, an income that you don't see um, in, in other states, uh, such as natural gas or oil production or coal production, depending on, on the location of the state. But I'm sorry, I can't specifically <coughs> answer the, the historical aspect of the question that you ask. All right, thanks. All right, seeing no other questions, thank you, Mr. Carter. We'll turn now to the committee reports and recommendations and begin with the management report and Trustee Stewart. I'm filling in for Chairman Drummond, who uh, chairs that management committee, and he's at a, an event for TLC tonight raising money for TLC. So hopefully he's having a successful night there. Uh, management committee met on uh, 
September the 8th and went over a, uh, had an extensive agenda and went over a number of items and we have some to bring forward today, tonight uh, for the board. Uh, there are nine recommendations uh, that the board needs to take action on and the first six of them are annual or, uh, uh, or renewal of annual contracts uh, and I'd like to lump those all together if, if that's okay with the board and uh, I'll read the uh, you can see in the in the minutes of the meeting the more detail on there but I'll read you the recommendation it's a recommendation of the management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation of the college administration to approve the following prime vendor for food and food supplies to Cisco Food Services of Kansas City, not to exceed $800,000. Temporary employment services to A1 Careers at $90,000 and apprentice personnel at $97,500. Nortel telephone switch maintenance to Allegiant Networks, not to exceed $63,504. Solid waste disposal to Deffenbaugh Industries, not to exceed $65,000. Bulk fuel to McEnany Oil Company, not to exceed $90,000. And painting to TMP, not to exceed $50,000. And again, those are uh, renewals of contracts. So they've been reviewed and bid out and, and uh, continue to uh, provide services for the college. And I think we've had good experience with all those. So I will make that motion. Second. All right, we have both motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions pass. Uh, the seventh recommendation is a purchase of three passenger vans, and these three vans will replace three vans and one sedan. Replaced vehicles will be traded in, and their trade-in allowances are reflected in the total bid expenditure. And this is, recommendation is addressed on page eight in the board packet. And it's a recommendation of management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation of college administration to approve the low bid of $50,130 from Shawnee Mission Ford Inc. for passenger vans. And I'll make that motion. Right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have both a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, just, just for my own clarification, what factors go into determining whether a van is up for no longer use. Is it mileage? Is it condition? Or is it all of the above? All of the above. Okay. Thank you. Any other further questions or discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Recommendation number eight is we have one sponsorship to present this evening. The sponsorship is in support of the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce's 124th annual dinner on November 22nd at the Hyatt Regency Crown Center. Uh, this one the recommendation is addressed on page 10 in the board <coughs> packet. And it is a recommendation of the management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation of college administration to approve $3,000 for the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. And I'll make that motion. Second. All right, we have both a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. The uh, final recommendation is one that we've discussed a little bit last month and brought back, and that is relating to publications and public notices and the fact that some publication is no longer in existence. So we, we want to make sure we have some, uh, uh, we have designated, and now two, a, 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 a one and then a backup to use uh, because we don't know what's happening for sure with our newspaper industry and, and uh, we want to make sure we're covered for this. But so this is a recommendation of the management committee that the board of trustees accept the recommendation of college administration to also designate the Shawnee Dispatch and Tri-County News as official newspapers of the college. <coughs> that publication con constitutes legal notice on behalf of the board of trustees. That's in addition to the legal record. So straightforward motion, I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I'll uh, just kind of com comment. You have your capital acquisitions and improvements report, uh, page 24 and 25. Uh, Rex Hayes continues to do a good job of overseeing that and, and updating the committee on those each month. And uh, we're looking forward to the ribbon cutting at the Olathe Health Education 
uh, Center on October 6th. And I guess the significant news there is we came in a, a million dollars under budget on that project. So uh, that's good news. That's maybe a sign of the economy and people are a little hungrier when they're bidding on these projects. So we're, we get a little benefit from that. And the hospitality and culinary academy is in the planning stages and everything is moving forward on that. Um, we also had the IT infrastructure plan update. It was prepared by uh, Denise Moore, and that's on page 26 and 28. And there, uh, there was a lot going on, and I, I know Denise, <laughs> Denise knows that, but <laughs> if you sit in that committee and you listen to all the, uh, and you go through this report and listen to all the things that are going on, uh, we got a lot going on, and Denise and her team are doing an outstanding job of keeping the college on the cutting edge. and and protecting the college's uh, infrastructure and, and security. So uh, just personally, I feel very comfortable with Denise in that role and what she's doing. So that concludes my report. Uh, I think that was from last month. Yeah, thank you. Right. Trustee Stewart, thank you. Right, we'll move then to the learning quality report and Trustee Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we met on September 7th, and um, I think it was a Thursday instead of a Monday. We moved to the meeting due to the holiday, <clears throat> but um, had a number of updates from a couple of different departments, uh, uh, some really good presentations. We discussed the Early Alert Program, which is a cross-functional, multidisciplinary team that's been put together to really um, find those kids that are in trouble before they're in trouble, um, academically anyway where um, you have teachers from a different from a number of different um, areas coming together and talking about um, you know places and wh where they see problems coming um, because some, one teacher may see it another may not they may be able to correlate stories between the two um, I thought it was a really good presentation and a good way to address um, student achievement before we have any problems um, we also had a great uh, presentation by the cosmetology program and we had a number of their uh, teachers come in and talk to us about the, the various uh, academic programs the number of students that they send through the program um, and uh, obviously their amazing services and I would encourage all of you to go get a mani-pedi or a, a brow wax or a facial <laughs> or whatever um, at a really good deal and help students learn I mean you know tough job um, they're going to be instituting a number of programs to <clears throat> help students uh, in terms of customer service, learn how to uh, be better at their jobs when they're out in the, in the, in the real world. Um, we, let's see, talked a lot about um, continuous quality improvement, CQI, which was a really great presentation. Um, Sandra Warner talked about the um, programs, the seminars she's been offering to faculty to help um, expand the CQI concepts throughout the, throughout, throughout the institution of really putting together um, plans, being able to measure those goals, um, and coming back and improving based on those measurements. So um, she did a good job of that. What else did we talk about? And there was a couple of, there were a couple of uh, curriculum changes. Uh, statistics and psychological research was uh, was added, as well as um, an introductory biology class for non-majors, which there are some issues with lab uh, lab only biology classes versus uh, lecture only biology classes. So they um, fixed that some of those issues. Uh, Dr. Day reported that fall head counts were up by a half a percent. Uh, credit hours were down half a percent. Um, but I don't know where if we if we have 20 day numbers. Um, uh, 20 day numbers are right about the same place, are just uh, about 0.8% <laughs> up and head, um, in head, head count and just a little bit down in our FTE or student credit hours. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Calloway. And uh, the Tobacco Free Campus Initiative is going very well. A lot of people talking about it. Um, I love it as I walk through campus and you don't have to gasp for air before you head out um, outside and walk through the, the, the haze. Um, the next quality learning quality committee meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 3rd in the Lytle Room, G GEB 141 at 8 a.m. My report. Yeah.
and just to clarify, are you implying that any of the board members need brow waxing or? <laughs> I'm not gonna name any names, but you know who you are. All right, okay. This All happened right. last time I got a brow wax. <laughs> <laughs> for college. I don't know if they okay, can help okay. you. Yeah, that was, at a, that was at a different college. It wasn't here, right? Okay. All right, thank they you, Trustee Sharp. <laughs> Right. Uh, Trustee Dr. Cook, uh, Human Resources, please. Uh, Human Resources did not meet in September, so we have no report. All right, thank you. Moving then to the President's recommendations for action, we'll begin with the Treasurer's report and return to uh, Trustee Stewart. On page 33 is the Treasurer's report for uh, month of July. July was the first month of the fiscal year, so it only covers one month. And uh, uh, I guess in August, skipping through July. In August, we received $10.6 million state grant payments, so that will show up next month, but uh, not much to show in that one month of the fiscal year. <coughs> but it is a recommendation of college administration that the Board of Trustees approve the Treasury report for the month of July 2011, subject to audit. And I'll make that motion. Second. All right, we have both a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And Trustee Stewart, does that conclude your That concludes uh, the Treasurer's report. report. And I just comment, whenever I see Bob Prater's signature on the Treasury report, I, I'm assured it's going to be accurate and well done, because Bob does a great job for the college, and I want to mention that. All right. Thank you. Well deserved. All right, Dr. Calloway, your monthly report to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and just to uh, Mr. Stewart's, uh, Trustee Stewart's comment, uh, Joe Sopcich and I don't sign unless Bob signs it too. <laughs> we, we look at, Bob, Bob does do a great job and we're very appreciative to the good things that he does, uh, does for our, our college and our students. And to that point, uh, just uh, a note um, and a thanks to the budget unit heads um, across the college. We did complete the fiscal year last year, spending between 91 and 92% of the budget, which is really good news for us, um, along with some of the reductions that we knew we were forced to make because of um, tax value assessment going down. Um, and we, we cut, as you'll remember, about $5 million out of the budget last year, but we still um, finished with all those cuts um, between 91 and 92% of, of expenditures. That's a really good piece of news because it allows us to carry some additional um, funds into this year, which we also know will be a tough year. So congratulations to the finance team, but also to all of our budget unit heads. A number of things I just point out today um, um, from my report, and uh, thank Trustee Sharp for her mentioning the Early Alert Program. It's one of our college initiatives around student success and retention. We've been working very hard on that program, and congratulate Dr. Reinhardt and her team, uh, Dr. Kovac, and, and certainly the fac 12 faculty and and counselors and staff who uh, are in Dr. Day's team who uh, are part, become part of that triage team that helps us support students who may be at risk or finding themselves in trouble. It's, uh, you know, for us another one of those safety nets that we think will really help us with our retention. As you know, even though we've reduced our cost per FTE by a pretty significant margin over the last three to four years, um, our retention numbers have gone up and we think that a lot of that has to do and our student success um, numbers have gone up as a result of we think a lot more engagement by our faculty in the classroom, our counselors and other folks outside the classroom, and programs like Early Alert and Dream Johnson County. So we're gonna continue working on those efforts. We think it's a great investment in our students and we'll continue to see uh, our retention and student success numbers go up. Uh, yesterday we were uh, pleased to host an event with St. Luke's Hospital where we had Dr. Carmona in who was the 17th Surgeon General of the United States, served as Surgeon General under uh, President um, uh, George Bush and uh, second George Bush um, and uh, did a great job. Dr. Carmona is now a faculty member at the University of Arizona and uh, was brought in by our colleagues at St. Luke's as they were uh, meeting with about 100 plus, 130 or so um, employers from around the region who are interested in how we can all work together to keep health healthcare costs down and a lot of discussion related to preventative medicine and, and supportive mechanisms like um, employee wellness programs. So he did a great job for us and had a great uh, turnout for that and thank our, our colleagues at St. Luke's South, particularly Kathy Hall and her team who uh, supported that program. A reminder that uh, the 28th of September will be the State of the College Address 
Um, I'll be providing that at 3 p.m. at the Public Ski Auditorium, and if your time allows, we invite you and all the community to that event. Um, look forward to a discussion related to Innovation Johnson County, and, and uh, uh, hopefully the, the event will be well attended by our community. Um, Melody Blobla Blobaum from our Public Information um, Office has uh, put out the first editions now of the JCCC News, and if you're interested in, in uh, being put on the distribution list of that um, e electronic newsletter and, and the like, uh, just contact either Julie Haas or, or Melody, um, and they can get, get you onto that list, either board members or anyone in the community. Um, had the opportunity in the last couple of days to spend more time than you'd ever want to spend with the Board of Regents <laughs> and uh, in discussions as, as uh, Dick Carter shared with you related to budgets and, and the like and also articulation and transfer. We had a great meeting yesterday um, and then turned around and had another meeting there today with, um, with our university and community college colleagues and um, as Dick reported, uh, the initial request that was presented for $20 million which was the first year of um, three years fa phase in of the <coughs> funding of the tiered formula for career and technical education was reduced from 20 to eight. We had a lot of discussion about that. Um, and part of what I um, had to say the, the, um, this <coughs> afternoon when I, we met with the regents was we had, we had seen approvals for um, a host of issues in support of KU Med Center and designation uh, for uh, their cancer designation um, and also uh, um, University, or Kansas State University and their veterinary medicine program in support of the activities that are happening through the Johnson County um, Education <coughs> Research Triangle and I reminded the regents and um, um, folks in the audience including the presidents and chancellor that um, part of the reason that we were suppo so supportive of that activity was we, we always felt that the college would be uh, an equal benefactor even though we didn't receive any of those funds because of the responsibility and we thought the opportunity to continue to train allied health and nursing professionals and the best way for us to get that done was to also get the support from them related to uh, equal support that they're providing to those entities to the college colleges for trained nursing and allied health professionals. Um, we did uh, uh, have a good discussion and, and debate around that and, and they brought forward their plan. We'll see where it goes. Um, they're hoping to keep numbers realistic and we're, we're worried that the numbers will reduce down from eight million to the community colleges. And our concern, quite frankly, is when you divide eight million dollars up among 19 community colleges and seven technical colleges, um, the number gets pretty small, although it's the, the funding for that um, is based on the um, student FTE and you would remember then that about 20% of any of those new dollars would come to us because of uh, we, we generate about 20% of that for, uh, student performance. So we're keeping our fingers crossed um, that, <coughs> that we keep the number at 8 million and we'll see where that goes. And then finally, I'd just like to recognize that we have a new doctor in our midst. Um, Trustee and Chairman Weiss uh, completed his, um, his defense of his um, dissertation yesterday. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, and so we'll be changing his nameplate to Dr. Weiss, and we congratulate Don. We know all the other things you have going on to, to work and complete your your uh, doctoral degree is really a, quite an achievement. We congratulate you on that. We should probably give him a round of applause. Thank you. And thank you. And for those of you that don't know my uh, uh, doctorate degree is in higher ed administration, uh, and it's uh, given me a, a much deeper uh, understanding and appreciation of, of the complexity and the hard work that uh, all members of this college community uh, do uh, just as an everyday uh, fact of, of doing business. So uh, thank you again for all the hard work that you do. We congratulate you, uh, Trustee Weiss and Dr. Weiss. Um, and then finally, I would just uh, um, share with the board that we continue to meet with our friends and colleagues in the housekeeping um, department. Um, we've, we've been holding regular meetings led by Dr. Grove and Mr. Hayes and, and visiting with them related to an internal proposal on what we would be um, looking at if we, if we maintain our housekeeping services internal. Um, there have been some challenges back and forth. As you know, right now we're right about at the industry standard for personnel and there's some belief on the part of the custodial crew that we're down five or six people than it would ever be possible. Um, to keep this facility clean. We're just not in a position to add 
five or six custodial positions. And so we have some discussion, debate on that, and maybe, um, you know, some of the information we heard today is the result of, you know, we know that that's going to be a real challenge for us. Um, in addition, uh, we do have an in, um, every expectation, as we had indicated, that we're going to bring forward a recommendation to management committee um, in October and, and then for a final decision at our board meeting next month. We're right on target with that agenda. And um, also, we've been visiting with our leadership team, and yesterday had decided we were going to do another town hall meeting with all of the, the staff from the housekeeping. So we do continue to keep them informed. They don't always agree with the data that we're gathering and the information we're finding and, and the like, but uh, I would just commend Dr. Grove and Rex Hayes for their work. We know it's been difficult, and not everyone always agrees, but uh, we're going to continue to work on that. And we, we do truly value that group. They've done a great job for us, and um, we have to gather the information, and then we'll be bringing that forward to this board. So we're right about on the time frame that we shared with them and with you, and, and we do plan to have and know we'll be fully prepared for a recommendation to the Management Committee in October. So. Mr. Chairman, that uh, concludes my report. I'd answer any questions you might have, though. Yes, sir. Chairman Weiss, thank you. Um, well, with, with all due respect to the presentation that was made during petitions and communications, uh, whereby the uh, comment was made, <coughs> brand is being diminished. I, I believe in your report, Dr. Calway, there's just evidence after evidence of, of faculty and staff and programs that distinguish themselves. Um, under the education section where we talk about early childhood, in fact, there's two references that the early childhood program has a very, what I would call significant waiting list for people to get uh, their children into the program. But under the education report, um, we talked about uh, Johnson County Community College is one of eight colleges that were granted um, this, this grant uh, to focus service and learning. And uh, only one of eight institutions to receive that grant. Uh, I, I apologize for not remembering how many colleges there are in the nation. But uh, if there are 19 in Kansas, I'm assuming that there's uh, it's about several uh, hundred. There's about 1,200 um, community college districts nationwide, somewhere around 1,600 campuses. So I point out that here's but one example of being recognized uh, as one of eight in that large group uh, for the early childhood program, I think is quite significant. And then over under the psychology section, uh, it, would, it came to my attention with the speaker coming in, um, Preston Washington, who's a Cherokee freedman. There was a, uh, quite an article in the Kansas City Star, I, rec I think in the last few days, about that topic. So I really applaud uh, the college and staff for trying to reach out and uh, provide diverse opportunities for our, for our students and our citizens. And I, I just, again, am I'm very pleased with the large number of uh, outstanding, outstanding events that are going on on a daily basis here that elevate the brand of Johnson County Community College uh, locally, statewide, and nationally. Thank you, Trustee Cook. Any other comments or questions for Dr. Calloway? All right. I do not believe that we have any old <clears throat> business at this time. And I don't believe we have any new business either, unless anyone would like to bring forward something. All right. We'll move then to uh, reports from board liaisons and begin uh, with uh, Trustee Dr. Cook with the Kansas Association of Community College Trustees. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm honored and blessed to, uh, to kind of ride the saddle that Lynn Mitchelson uh, set. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Calloway and I had the privilege of traveling to Hiawatha uh, on Sunday, September 11th for uh, kind of a two-part meeting. We had a reception opening meeting in Hiawatha at a really uh, one of their old buildings in downtown, which is their city hall that had been re remodeled and renovated. And as we uh, entered the room, um, there sat uh, trust, former trustee Lynn Mitchelson and Alicia Mitchelson. And uh, we thought that maybe uh, Lynn just couldn't get out of the habit, but um, <laughs> he was there, they were there as guests of Joyce Rush, who is on the board at uh, Highland Community College and longtime friends, and uh, were visiting her. But, and she invited them to the reception we had that evening. Uh, then went over to the city of Highland on Monday morning for um, our day meeting. Um, uh, Ken Van Blericum from Pratt Community College chairs the Kansas Association of, of College Trustee Boards, and uh, Dr. Calloway chairs the Council of Presidents for the state. And uh, again, I will say that the um, 
uh, the expectation and the, um, uh, the leaning ship on the leadership of Dr. Calloway is, is quite evident. I mean, a lot of the colleges and the presidents and the board members look, look to uh, Johnson County Community College based on what Lynn had done and also the work of Dr. Calloway. So it's really an honor for me to be in that, in that position to, to, to represent us on that board. Spent the morning with our individual meetings. Uh, I would say that the uh, financial condition of uh, KACCT is in good hands and in good order. Um, we then broke into small groups in the morning and um, a facilitator that the uh, KACCT used last year, a couple years ago I guess, to set a strategic agenda was brought in and we, we spent time in small groups. Uh, that, that carried over. Um, uh, till late morning when the board met individually and, and the presidents met individually and then we had lunch together and then we convened again in a strategic setting activity. We really came up with four initiatives to work on for a strategic plan, that being funding, advocacy, articulation, and uh, marketing communication. And in that funding category, of course, uh, the foundation is the, the 20 million uh, tiered funding that Mr. Carter and Dr. Calloway have addressed. Uh, and, and the, uh, but the KACCT will continue to uh, educate and work on that funding over the long term. Uh, considerable time on advocacy. Uh, how can we work together? And by the way, back to the tiered funding, I, I believe that it was, it was quite significant that the 19 colleges appear to be hand in glove in that, in that plan, in that format. So if, if we have the 19 colleges working together, that's, that's a significant step. And the interest to have a common message and while we are quite different among the 19 colleges with, with uh, programs and constituencies, and uh, they, they all are very interested in making sure we have a consistent common message uh, to the legislature and uh, talked about a number of things and are working on a number of things to enhance that. The articulation uh, really came up with, with three uh, <coughs> main sub-bullets, sub and that's to support a plan to have a seamless transfer of credit hours um, of the associate's degree to all Kansas universities. And uh, all the colleges, again, are very serious about getting that accomplished. Uh, secondly, ensure a well-designed process of transfer of student credits. And then um, hopefully the colleges, the community colleges can come up with a common numbering system of coursework. And again, all are, are committed to trying to get that done. Uh, and the fourth marketing communi communication is how do we enhance, protect the brand of the importance of community colleges in the state of Kansas. So all of us uh, broke into uh, subgroups and have uh, assignments going forward, so we're looking forward to uh, that work uh, in, in the future. Our next meeting is uh, December 4th and 5th in Independence, Kansas. Um, we did have discussion about where we meet uh, this whole geographic issue, and I think longer term, I think the dates have been pretty well set for 12, but the idea would be that in February we would meet in Topeka when we have a day at the Hill, uh, as we've had in the past. Uh, spring would be somewhere in eastern Kansas, summer maybe western Kansas, and, and then the September uh, retreat meeting would be in central Kansas. The uh, National Legislative Seminar uh, is uh, scheduled for February 13th through the 16th, I think is on the calendar, in Washington, D.C. That's an ACCT event, and um, we, uh, we had such a successful event last year as a late afternoon reception. And I think a lot of that credit goes to Mr. Carter, who uh, really d did a lot of work for KACCT uh, in arranging, uh, getting all of the Kansas delegation and their staff to, th to that event. So uh, we, uh, we are planning to do something similar to that again this year. And for those of you that have not attended that, that legislative seminar, it's really a, a good one to attend, and you might want to put that on your calendar, February 13th, 16th of 2012. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, that is my report, and we're looking forward to December and, uh, and going to Independence. All right. Thank you, Trustee Cook. Uh, Johnson County uh, Research Triangle and Trustee Stewart. Uh, we, uh, we're now on a every other month meeting basis, so we did not meet since our last uh, board meeting, so I really have nothing to report. Our next meeting is Tuesday at the K-State uh, Innovation Campus and uh, just a couple items on the agenda, update on an audit report that we're gonna get, and also a, uh, uh, I guess, a demonstration of the, uh, the, the new website for JCERT. So that anyone wants to attend that meeting, it's 7.30 a.m. at the Olathe campus on Tuesday, September 27th. All right, thank you. <coughs> uh, quick question. Yes. 
Um, how are re re revenues coming in for that? Uh, I think they're as pretty much on target. Back up um, to target. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think they're still below, but they're not significantly below. So it's based Good. upon, obviously, the economy. It's mm -hmm. not doing as well. But uh, I think uh, I've seen one number, and I think that would have been July's number. So maybe that's a little higher than normal. So we'll, we'll probably get uh, August's number at this meeting. Thank you. And uh, Trustee Musil, do you have a foundation report for us? I do, Mr. Chair. And, uh, the trustees, the foundation executive board met last week and then the foundation directors met this Tuesday. Uh, primary focus on both of them was uh, fiscal year 2011 uh, report. Um, at, for the fiscal year 2011, which ended on June 30th, the foundation assets were up 12% from fiscal year uh, 10 at about 25.8 million and they have now regained and slightly exceeded where we were before the economic downturn in 2008. Good. So the investment uh, investment growth for that fiscal year was very good. Since that time, the market has not been very good, so <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not as good for the rest of the time. Um, one of the highlights, I think, that everybody learned was that scholarship distribution was up 39%. Um, over $911,000 actually got into the hands of students and the foundation staff and Dr. Day and, and the, the administration has done a great job of matching kids to the, or matching students to the funds that are available, some of which have restrictions, and so you've got to find and make sure we get that out. But a 40% increase is pretty impressive. It's wonderful. It's also a challenge for the future. If we're going to do that every year, we need to keep raising more scholarship money and more endowment money over and over again. So um, overall revenues were up 25%. Uh, and so we received a report on the Culinary Center and uh, the new building uh, plan uh, at, the, at the director's meeting. Some Enchanted Evening is almost sold out, and every time, now that I say that, I don't know if anybody's here, but there, I think there were two tables left, so one table left now, and um, it's been very successful. It will honor the past, uh, the first 24 Johnson Counties of the year, and President Callaway and Marlene, are, First Lady Marlene, are the uh, honorary chair couple for this year. Um, uh, the, the committee members, just so we all remember who uh, have done such a good job in planning that, are Brad and Libby Bergman, Mary Birch, uh, Mayor Mike Bame of Lenexa, Linda Carlson, Lewis and Laura Gregory, Cal and Lisa Kleinman, Pat and Beth McCowan, Ken and Nancy Millard, Tom and Cheney Mitchell, and Tom served as the corporate sponsor chair of that committee, Lyle and Jan Pishney, Ryan and Jennifer Schneider, and Steve and Wanda Wilkinson. Steve is the president of the foundation for this year. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Trustee Musil. The uh, Collegial Steering Committee, uh, committee did not uh, meet today. Uh, so I have no report from that, and so that would move us to the uh, Faculty Association, and is uh, Mr. Anderson here, hiding behind the pillar. It's not a great view back there either. <laughs> <laughs> Something that uh, probably is not maybe high on your radar at this point in time, but it's coming up. We're going to be going into a contract negotiation year um, this, 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 this coming year here. And I uh, just want to announce that our team is getting close to being formed. I think we're maybe one person short of having it finalized. Uh, we've been uh, doing some meetings over the past few weeks to get some issues uh, uh, kind of focused on what we want to bring forward this coming year. And uh, there's been some preliminary talk with regard to starting early. Um, we, we typically start in the spring and then we tend to do like a sprint dash to the finish line to get it done. And so there's a possibility we could maybe see some movement going underway maybe this sometime even this fall. So um, we're certainly open to that. And then uh, we had a meeting here recently with uh, Dr. Korb regarding the salary study. And we understand that the salary study is, is intended to look at uh, three groups on campus, the uh, administration, faculty, and staff, I believe. And we had a discussion with, with Dr. Carver about that, and there was a recommendation from our group that um, if we're going to do the study, we, it would be our preference that the, uh, the group would start with the administrative group first as, as the process begins and continue that cycle over the, over the next three years. And so um, that's all I have tonight, very short report. All right. Any questions, comments? All right. Uh, thank you, sir. That moves us to our second petitions and communications section of tonight's agenda. 
And once again, the petitions and communications section of the board agenda is a time for members of the community to provide comments to the board. Comments are limited to five minutes unless a significant number of people plan to speak. In that instance, the chair may limit a person's comments to less than five minutes. Presenters uh, may choose to speak at the first or second petition section, but not both. And prior to beginning comments, we ask that you state your name, address, city, and state. And do we have anyone at this time that would like to address the board? All right, and seeing none, we will close the petitions and communications section uh, for tonight's agenda. And move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda uh, is a number of uh, items considered in one motion that are uh, typically routine uh, motions. Uh, and uh, we will uh, consider those as one motion, unless there's anyone uh, on the board that would like to, uh, to pull any of the items or consider any of the items separately. All right, seeing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, uh, approve the consent agenda. So moved. All right. Second. All right, we have a motion uh, and a second. Any discussion? My, uh my wife pointed out, and she was quite concerned that under the HR addendum, that we have hired uh, John Ham as the yes. application architect, <laughs> and whether he would continue filming Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Denise, can you answer that for her? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, your wife was concerned that he would or would not. Uh, she's concerned that he would not. Okay. <laughs> I'm just glad the smarter one in the household is reading the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. All right, any other uh, uh, comments, uh, snide or otherwise? Uh, all right, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, and that brings us to, uh, I believe we're going to have an executive session uh, for this evening. Thank you. And I would like to entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy interest of the individuals to be discussed and for consultation with an attorney which will be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship in order to protect the uh, privilege and the board's communications with its attorney on legal matters. And this session, I think, will start with 30 minutes. All right. And no action will be taken during this session, and we would like to also invite uh, our attorneys, uh, Mark Ferguson, our staff attorney, uh, Tanya Wilson, and uh, Judy Corp uh, to join this uh, executive uh, session, and I will entertain a motion at this time. So moved. Okay, we have a, a motion. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All right. Second. All, right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and excuse me. I, I may have missed something. Did, was Dr. Callaway part of that? Not at this time. We, okay. Okay. Uh, all right, we will then uh, break for uh, executive session in, uh, uh, we'll start in, in approximately three minutes and uh, last in, in, until uh, 6.45 when we will uh, resume with the public section. Probably a good idea. Okay. I'll see you. Yes. Um, yeah. I haven't been for uh, some time, but professors. Yeah. Academic types. They, they don't have a lot. Sometimes it, it, that's not a totally true statement. Okay. Uh, the board has returned from a 30-minute uh, executive session during which no action was taken. We are reconvening the, uh, the, the open uh, part of tonight's meeting. We have uh, one additional uh, item uh, for the board to consider, and that is approval of uh, Dr. Callaway's uh, new contract. And so I will entertain a, a motion to approve the, uh, the contract uh, as it was presented to us. So moved. All right. Do I have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, both a motion and a second. Uh, uh, any discussion? All, right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 
No, I'd like to explain. Okay, proceed. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to, I'm not opposing uh, Dr. Calloway for, um, at, at all in any stretch. I'm um, opposing an overall increase in this position. I feel like this position is very well compensated when you look at um, our regents count counterparts uh, this position is compensated about equal to that of, of Kansas State University, which is a very large, huge campus, um, many PhD and master's and, and bachelor's programs. Um, in this environment, I, I have concerns about giving increases um, over and above our faculty increases when we've additionally cut millions of dollars out of our budget. It's a, it's a, numbers, um, a numbers issue for me. And um, I, I feel like we're, we're very, very grateful for the work that Dr. Calloway is doing. Um, it is not um, a statement towards him at all. It's the position I feel like is very well compensated. And at this time, I can't support um, a, a significant increase in that, in that total compensation package. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Trustee Musil. I probably voted out of the most ignorance of anybody being new and not uh, being part of the initial part of this process. But I, I would say that Stephanie is, I understand the concern about, about the dollars because what I've learned in three meetings is that we watch our dollars very carefully. Um, but the president of this university is a 24-7, 365 day a year job. When I look at the financial reports and see that we have $91 million in investments and a 200 plus million dollar operating budget um, and 21,000 credit students and 15,000 non-credit and 10, eight to 10,000 Burlington Northern Santa Fe and all of the things that go on. And I hear that the actual monetary compensation in here is really a 3% 3, 3 increase. Even in tough times, I, I have seen, I believe this board is comfortable that Dr. Calloway has helped us meet our strategic goals um, in, in a very tough time. And for that reason, um, I, I could support that this year. Uh, is there I'm not sure I could have said that any better. Thank you, Trustee Musil. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, we the the comment section um, uh, is over. We and when we have had a, a vote, I appreciate your comments uh, nonetheless. And uh, it looks like the motion has passed uh, five to one. Uh, so uh, the motion has passed. And unless we have any other uh, business to uh, conduct this evening, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Seven o'clock. There you go. You still might want to. <laughs>